Hi, this is John Nowatsky, um, Extension Ag Machine Systems Specialist. And this presentation is about LoRaWAN technology uh, for farms and ranches. LoRaWAN technology, um, I'll go through uh, what it is, talk about uh, applications in agriculture, and how does this, how, how does it work, and then a real basic introduction on how to get started. LoRaWAN technology um, is often called IoT, and IoT is Internet of Things, and in this case, uh, Internet of Things for Agriculture. Um, it's a long-range, wide-area network, and it's used to monitor um, assets or conditions. In this case, and, and for farmers and ranchers, um, they can use this technology to monitor soil conditions, monitor um, so moisture, soil temperature, rainfall, they can use it to uh, monitor uh, remote buildings, knowing whether somebody goes into them or whether doors are opened. Uh, you can monitor fuel tanks. Uh, you can be, be, uh, be able to see on your cell phone what the level of the tank is. Uh, even uh, in terms of agriculture, you can monitor uh, water tanks out in pastures. Uh, you can actually monitor locations of cattle by putting tags on them. So LoRaWAN stands for Long Range Wide Area Network. This is a um, wireless network and uh, it communicates uh, between sensors and the antenna and then to the internet. Uh, LoRaWAN is, is free. It's a license-free radio frequency, and it enables uh, fairly long-range communication up to uh, five miles in rural areas, maybe two miles in urban areas. And uh, this technology uh, allows you to put the sensors out remotely and then collect that information on an antenna, antenna send it to the internet and manage it in a way that you can see it either on your cell phone or on your computer. Uh, this technology is, is uh, managed by a, uh, an organization called LoRa Alliance. It's a group of individuals and representatives from companies that are making the equipment and specifically making sensors and selling them uh, so that, uh, you know, they, once they're set up on this uh, LoRa system, then once you buy them, you can use this system to view the data. Um, and again, uh, there's, a, there's a variety of sensors, uh, soil moisture sensors, soil temperature sensors, um, <clears throat> air temperature, relative humidity, those things can be set up out in the field. Uh, you can monitor rainfall, wind speed, wind direction. Um, you can, as I mentioned, liquid level in tanks, whether that be a fuel tank or whether that be a water tank for cattle. Um, GPS locations of equipment. So you can put a GPS um, small sensor on the equipment and know where it is all the time. You can look at stored grain temperature, uh, again, livestock movements, uh, building security. The, uh, there's no operating cost. Um, and again, transmits up to five miles. Uh, the, the small sensors, and I'll show you pictures of them, um, operate on small batteries like um, uh, D-cell batteries, and they'll last several years, at least two years and maybe longer. The prices, again, I'll show you examples of them, uh, quite a range in prices for them. Um, the gateway requires electricity, and I'll go over that in more detail, and it needs to be connected to the internet. But the key here is that all this data, uh, once you get it set up, will be readily available on your computer or on your cell phone. Here are some examples of sensors. Um, starting on the upper left-hand side is a gateway. And again, you need to have, it's like a receiving antenna. And there are a variety of, of options available and a variety of prices. I've indicated they're $50 to $600. And then if you look at the uh, sensors, they are all weatherproof so they can be set up outside. Uh, again, if you had uh, temperature and moisture sensors in your fields. Uh, you can put a little flag up to know where you're at so that when you want to go back and, and collect them, uh, you know where they're at. Um, 
the GPS unit uh, that I've listed here is one that could be installed on a on a tractor, on a four-wheeler, and then everyone uh, on the farm organization would know where it is all the time. Liquid level in tanks, uh, I think uh, a clear example for this would be monitoring water in uh, field, in, in water tanks in pastures. Uh, on the right-hand side, motion sensors and open door, open and closed door sensors. There is um, uh, the, the GPS tags for cattle as you see there, they're, they're a bit too expensive, $80, but they're being developed by a number of companies uh, around the world. And uh, obviously as this technology develops, it will become less and more, more uh, affordable. So how does it work? Because again, you need to have sensors that are by themselves, set up remotely. And I've got these three examples. Uh, so a moisture sensor, so temperature or air temperature sensor, um, a rain gauge. So you set those up in the field and they have battery power so they can transmit, transmit signals. Then you need to have some kind of a gateway to receive that. I have an example in the middle of one. And then on the right hand side, you can see a picture of one of these um, gateways installed on a uh, power pole. And um, again, in this case, there's electricity and there is uh, uh, internet uh, wired to that. However, if you don't have internet at that site, out, you know, say, say you're monitoring something that's, that's 10 miles away, if you're putting the gateway 10 miles away from your farm and there is no uh, electricity or internet there, uh, the internet can be, uh, you can use a cellular subscription um, to get the internet. Now, again, the problem with that, you have to pay for that. So it might be 25 or $30 a month for the subscription. So that would be an operating cost. Uh, the gateway, if there is no electricity there, we've set them up using 12 volt uh, batteries and then getting, uh, uh, spending uh, 25 or 30 dollars for a small solar collector to keep the power in that location. So it does work even if you don't have internet and uh, electricity available. So the data has to be managed. It's one thing to collect it and to send it you know, to the edge of the field to a gateway, but you need some way of, of managing it. So there are a number of ones available. I'm using, uh, we'll explain here something called the Things Network. Again, a uh, free and open source um, management system on the internet to manage the data. And uh, it's usable worldwide and it can move the data from the sensors to the internet. So again, it's, it's not uh, exactly uh, you know, being able to set it up and, and let it work. You have to go through a procedure to set it up and I'll monitor that in a minute. <clears throat> And then once the data is sent to the internet, the last thing that has to be done is making it uh, uh, viewable on the internet. So you take that sensor data that comes in this case uh, from a soil moisture and soil temperature sensor. Uh, and then you, it, it, we're, we're, there are a number of opportunities to uh, visualize that data. Uh, I'm using one and we'll talk about one called uh, My Devices, Cayenne. And again, this is a open source system that um, individuals and, and companies are setting up so that the data can be used from their sensors. It's worth noting here that not only can you visualize the data and see it on your cell phones or see it on your computer, but you can also use this site to have it send you a text message. For example, if a door is left open or if somebody goes into a building, you can get immediate text message or an email or if an animal is in the wrong place, we can get a text message to know that. So in setting up um, the system on the things network, again, this is something that uh, for people that are interested, I'd be very happy to put together a uh, short uh, couple hour workshop to really explain this in detail and provide that information to you. But I'll just go through the basic steps. You have to set up, um, a uh, login, you have to set up uh, a console on the things network. 
You have to create an application, or an application might be something like uh, um, one uh, gateway with five soil moisture, soil uh, temperature sensors. You have to register those devices, and then you have to add an integration to the application. And the integration, again, is simply a way of viewing that information on the internet. Uh, we're using this, uh, my device is Cayenne because it's open source and freely available. Again, in addition to doing the setting up the system on the uh, things network, you need to set up uh, um, an account on my devices and then add the device and uh, you plug in the uh, device EUI, which is the electronic uh, unique identification that comes with every sensor and every gateway. You, you click it and then it's available. It's really that simple. So LoRaWAN technology uh, is a way to freely uh, monitor assets and activities. The only cost is the setup cost, the cost of the equipment, but there's no cost to use it. Uh, you know, a lot of examples, uh, we're doing some experimenting at the uh, Streeter Research Center on Livestock Movement and Location at uh, a number of places across the state with temperature, humidity, um, soil, air, uh, wind, rainfall. So there's a, a lot of opportunities. Uh, basically, the cost to set this up is relatively small. Uh, for a few hundred dollars, you could have everything set up and then be able to get that information and receive it. Uh, by emails and text information, or just simply to look at the internet to see it. If you have any questions, uh, this is my contact information. Uh, these days, the uh, cellular uh, number is the best one, or my email. And we are currently, I am currently developing a uh, fact sheet for LoRaWAN technology, and that will be available um, on the uh, NDSU Extension publication website uh, within a month. So uh, if you need that information, uh, just uh, Google NDSU extension publications and LoRaWAN. Thank you. Mm -hmm.